Hey everyone, today I'm gonna show you how to get from 1 to 99 thieving as fast as possible with some tips that no other guides mention. And I'll even include a few alternate methods that can make you up to 4 million GP per hour. Now, before we start robbing RuneScape's innocent civilians, I want to cover a few things that will make your new career as a criminal much more enjoyable. First up, if we go to your RuneScape settings and change your NPC attack options to hidden, it makes it so you can left click pickpocket just about everything in this guide, which is much faster than having to right click and select pickpocket. Now there are some NPCs that when you do this will show talk to instead of pickpocket. If you're on rune light, just hold the shift key, right click the NPC, and press swap left click pickpocket. If you're on any other client, you're basically screwed. But that's Jagex's fault and I can't fix it, so let's continue. Once you start pickpocketing, you'll notice with each successful pickpocket, you'll receive a coin pouch. Once you get 28 coin pouches, you won't be able to thieve anymore until you click on them to empty them. This is a feature that's supposed to prevent bots, but I don't really think it helps that much and is super annoying. However, much like the I'm not a robot button, I don't see coin pouches going away anytime soon, so don't forget to empty those pouches. Which leads me to my favorite underrated item that nobody really talks about. A foot pedal. I'm not even kidding. You can bind the pedal to press left click or any key you want whenever you press it. It's really nice for thieving methods where you can trap NPCs and you don't have to move your mouse. If you change your client to resizable with the modern layout, turn on side panel can be closed by the hotkeys in RuneScape settings and move your camera angle just right, you can line it up so you can click the NPC using the foot pedal, open the inventory with whatever F key you have it binded to on your keyboard, open coin pouches, close it with that same F key, and continue thieving, all without moving your mouse. If you're on rune light, you can turn on the inventory viewer plugin, so you can see how many coin pouches you have even when your inventory is closed. This is completely allowed by Jagex, and I personally used mine to get to 99. So I have an affiliate link for it in the description below if you're considering picking one up. If you have the cash for them, you should definitely stock up on dodgy necklaces. Wearing one gives you a 25% chance not to get stunned when failing a pickpocket. Each time this effect activates, it uses a charge, and after 10 charges are used, the necklace crumbles to dust. If you have 47 magic and have completed the quest A Kingdom Divided, you'll have access to the Shadow Veil spell on the RK a spell book. While the spell is active, it reduces your chance of being stunned when failing a pickpocket by 15%, or if you're also wearing a dodgy necklace, it stacks to become a 36.25% chance. Each cast will last 0.6 seconds for every magic level you have. So, for example, if you have 47 magic, we multiply 47 by 0.6 and determine that the spell will last for 28.2 seconds. Not a long time, but it gets the job done if you know what I mean. If you have 54 Hunter, you can also buy Gloves of Silence. They reduce your chance to fail a pickpocket by 5%, and each pair has 62 charges. You can either let them break and buy a new pair when charges run out, or if you have 64 crafting, repair them with one dark kebit fur and thread, which is actually much cheaper than buying a new pair. The big downside of these gloves is that they're useless in Ardone if you've completed the Ardone Medium Diary, and useless everywhere else if you've completed completed the Ardone Hard Diary, which I'll discuss in a bit. However, I won't be discussing how I pronounce Ardone because I'm sure just about everyone watching this video has their own different way to say it. Once you reach level 50 thieving, you should go complete the Rogue's Den minigame. Cracking the wall safes at the end of the minigame gives you a chance at a piece of the Rogue's outfit. Each piece of the outfit gives you a 20% chance of getting double the loot from each successful pickpocket, and wearing the full set guarantees double loot. So, so once you have the full set, don't wear your gloves of silence anymore as you'll need to be wearing the rogue's gloves to get that guaranteed double loot. And trust me, it's worth it. You wouldn't turn down double paychecks forever from your boss just because you had to do an hour of extra work once, right? 
Well, if that work was Rogue's Den, maybe you would, but I promise the pain is worth it. If you have the requirements, you should also try and complete as many tiers of the Ardone Diary as you can. The Easy Diary gives you a 10% increased chance to successfully steal from stalls in Ardone, which, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. As long as there's no guards around, your ability to steal from a stall is already 100%, right? So you can't fail at it. Okay, just checked. It turns out that despite what the diary says, it really just gives you a higher chance to receive cake instead of bread from the bakery stall. Thanks, Jagex. Continuing, medium is a 10% increased chance of successfully pickpocketing NPCs in Ardone, and the hard diary gives you a 10% increased chance of successfully pickpocketing anything anywhere in the game. Don't forget, these perks don't stack with the Gloves of Silence, so throw those in the garbage. While thieving, you can take a lot of damage, so if you have 99 hit points, you should wear the hit points cape as it doubles the speed at which you restore hit points. You'll notice that I wear the max cape in this video as it has the perks of every skill cape in one, and of course, I gotta flex that I have it. If you have the cash for it, not the max cape, you should also pick up a regen bracelet as it also doubles your hit points regeneration rate, and if you're wearing the hit points cape as well, it quadruples it. Math. Keep in mind, the bracelet is worn in your glove slot, so you won't be able to wear the full rogues outfit with it. So you'll have to decide if that trade-off is worth it. Regardless of what setup you wear, you'll also need food. I recommend using wines as they cost 2 GP and heal 11 hit points. They also temporarily lower your combat stats, but don't worry, you don't need them while thieving. You ever see someone chug 28 wine glasses and then try to fight someone? Yeah, it has the same effect in RuneScape. Before I get to the training methods, let's talk quests. There's quite a few quests with minimal requirements that can get your early levels out of the way, which trust me, you want. If not, expect it to go something like this. If you do the quest shown on screen now, you'll get from 1 to 24 thieving. All of them are fairly easy and have low requirements, but if you enjoy questing, you can also complete these other quests to get to 37, but they're not as easy as the previous quests. Just like dealing with hair loss isn't easy. And two out of three of us guys will have some of it taken from us by the time we're 35. Luckily, today's sponsor Keeps is here to help. Keeps is an online subscription service that has treatment plans that are clinically proven and research-backed to help prevent hair loss. Whether you're looking to stimulate hair growth, prevent hair loss, or just take better care of your hair, Keeps has you covered. Best of all, there's no awkward doctor's visits, and all plans are delivered through the mail straight to your door. So you don't have to waste even a single XP with pharmacy visits. But if you have any questions, each plan offers a full year of unlimited messaging so you can chat with your prescribing doctor about anything at any time. Except probably not RuneScape. It might be best to keep it on topic. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash colonello or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash colonello. Okay, on to the methods. Assuming you don't like questing, at level one, you should train thieving by pickpocketing men or women. Doesn't matter which way you swing, they're both the same XP. Men and women can be found anywhere, but if you want a good spot, north of Edgeville has more guys crammed into one room than a frat house. At level 5, you should switch to bakery stalls either in East Ardone or outside Karen Castle. I'd recommend East Ardone as if you stand here, none of the guards will see you stealing. At level 25, you should swap to fruit stalls in Hosidius. All you need for this is 15% Hosidius favor. The best spot for this is in this house in East Hosidius. There's no guards or guard dogs, so you can steal from these poor local farmers in peace. You'll notice in this clip that I'm running back and forth between stalls. It nets you a decent amount of extra XP, but is more click intensive. If you decide to run between both, make sure to wear weight reducing gear like Graceful, and maybe bring some stamina potions, or just eat the strange fruits that you sometimes get from the stall. At level 49, you unlock the ability to steal artifacts in Port Piscarilius. Now, the XP rates vary widely depending on your level, and if you're using a Book of the Dead or Cardust Memoirs, which I'll cover in a little bit, but here's a chart courtesy of the wiki of about what you can expect from this method. Now, to actually train it, you'll need 75% Port Piscarilius favor, a lock 
lock pick, and I'd highly recommend weight reducing gear like Graceful, a Ring of Endurance, and some stamina potions. If you have it, you should also bring a charged Book of the Dead or Cardest Memoirs, as they both teleport you to Port Piscarilius. You can equip it to teleport straight from the right click menu, but I forgot to do that in these clips and I don't want to re-record them. Lastly, you'll also need something that can teleport you very far away from Port Piscarilius. It doesn't matter where, you just need it. You'll see why in a minute. If you want to get a little sweaty, you could also bring along things to High Alk or Fletch, as you'll have a lot of downtime. Now, with that out of the way, let's actually do the method. To begin, right click on Captain Khaled in East Piscarilius and select Task. From there, he'll tell you what house to rob and where to find it. If you're on Runelight, I'd highly recommend installing the Stealing Artifacts plugin from the plugin hub, as it'll tell you exactly where to go. If not, you can use this map to decipher which house Khaled wants you to go to. Now is when you should use your Book of the Dead or Cardus Memoirs, as it'll drop you off a short run away from the houses that Khaled assigns. Once you've located the house, go into it and search the drawers inside for artifacts. Once you have it, don't let the guard see you or your goods will be confiscated and you'll be teleported away. Your stolen goods are now forfeit. Plus, if you tell Khaled you lost it, he'll tell you, congratulations, you're a failure. Congratulations, you played yourself. If you're having trouble with the guards, I'll quickly walk you through every path right now. So the southeastern house is probably the easiest. Once you loot the artifact, go downstairs and wait for the walking guard to go away. From here, stand next to this pole, click under the guard that is standing still, and then click the ladder in the house. When you go downstairs, you'll notice the guard is now facing the pole. As long as we stay at least a tile away from him, he'll never turn and catch us. So go to this tile and then run east. For every other house, we're going to want to set up another safe spot. The easiest way to do this one is if you have a task in the southern house, but you can do this from any house. Once you get near this guard, you're going to want to stand next to this pole and when the coast is clear, spam click under him. Even after he says he's caught you, keep clicking. After you get teleported south of Piscarilius, use another teleport to go far away, then teleport back. If you did it right, you'll notice that he's turned south. Just like the other guard, in future runs, stay at least a tile away from him or he'll turn around and catch you. The northwest, west, and southwest houses are all pretty easy and have more or less the same path. In this example, I'm in the southwestern house. As soon as this guard walks past me, I just run north. From here, hide behind this wall and wait for these two guards to walk away. Then, while this guard's back is turned, run and stand next to him. As long as you're next to him, he won't see you. Then, once he turns around, just run east. Lastly, the northern house is really easy as long as the safe spot is in place. Just wait for the coast to be clear and run east. At level 65, you can start blackjacking. But before I cover it, I do want to mention that if the idea of blackjacking makes you cringe, you could just continue stealing artifacts as the XP rates are very similar in the later levels. However, once you get into the rhythm of blackjacking, I honestly think it's the way to go. You could also start blackjacking early at level 45, but stealing artifacts is still more XP at that level. The only real requirement for this method is partially completing the feud quest. Other than that, all you need is a blackjack of any kind and food that'll fill up your whole inventory, like ceridome and brews, pies, wines, and so on. I'll explain why that's important later. If you plan on taking extended trips, you can also bring some GP, a noted stack of food, and unnote it at the banknote exchange merchant next to the general store in Paul Nivnich. Or just buy wine from Ali the Barman in southern Paul Nivnich. You might have guessed you need to travel to Paul Nivnich to train this method. When you get there, there, there's three NPCs you can blackjack, but they all have separate level requirements. At level 65, you'll be looking for the Menophyte Thugs in Southwestern Paul Nivnich. First things first, if you're on Runelight, hold shift and right click them and switch their left click to pickpocket. From there, assuming there isn't already one trapped in this room, you'll want to right click them, select lure, and lead one into it. If you can trap him in a corner, even better. From here, you right click him, 
them, knock them out, and then as fast as you can, click them again and pickpocket them. You can get two pickpockets in before they wake up if you're fast. An easy way to time this is by pressing pickpocket as soon as you see an XP drop, or maybe a little easier, as soon as you see your character start to crouch down for the first pickpocket, press pickpocket again. It takes a bit to get into the rhythm, but you'll get it down. Or if you're playing on Runelight and have pickpocket on left click, just spam left click. Easy as that. If you're playing in resizable mode, you can also angle your screen to where knockout will always be in the same spot. It means a lot less mouse movement for you. Now, you won't always successfully knock them out. If that happens, they'll attack you non-stop, but there's a few ways to de-aggro them. The easiest one is if your inventory is full and you press pickpocket without knocking him out, it stops the attack instantly. This is because if you knock him out first and then pickpocket him, you only get coins. Whereas if he's awake, pickpocketing him would give you coin pouches. I don't know why this works, but RuneScape's code has been self-described by developers as spaghetti. Now, if the thug has already attacked you more than once, this technique isn't going to work. So here's some other ways to de-aggro him. You could also wait until the damage hit splat shows up on your character, and at the same time, try and lure them while holding down the space bar. It may take a few tries, but it works. But for people with bad ping, it's maybe not the best way to go. So if you can't get that working, you could also just run over to the staircase, go up and down, and the aggro will be reset. Now, you could continue doing blackjacking to 99 as it's still decent experience, or at level 91, the pyramid plunder minigame, which is faster. In order to play, you'll either need to have started the Ichthlorin's little helper quest to get access to soften M, or by buying a charged pharaoh scepter off the grand exchange and using the Joss of Raw teleport option. Pretty sure I butchered about three words in that sentence, but oh well. I'd highly recommend the scepter because it teleports you right to the starting room, and other methods of getting here like magic carpet rides kind of suck. Assuming you don't have a scepter, once you get to soften M, you'll need to speak to Tariq next to the pyramid if it's your first time, and then enter using one of the four doors. Only one of those doors will lead you to the starting room, and the correct door can change. Now that you know how to get here, let's talk about setup. Regardless of your stats, you'll want something to cure poison like in Antidote Plus Plus. A lockpick is also helpful because it allows you to unlock tomb doors faster, but it does slightly lower the XP you get from doing so. Everything else depends on your levels. If, like me, you have high combat stats, access to an ornate rejuvenation pool inside a POH, and a Pharaoh Scepter, I'd just wear Graceful as well as a few prayer boosting items like a Blessing, a God Book, and a Dragon Moan Necklace. If you don't have a Pharaoh Scepter or have low combat stats, I'd instead swap out some of those Graceful pieces for more prayer boosting and defense items, bring along some prayer potions, and if you haven't done the contact quest, a decent bit of food. You'll see why later. For those with low agility, stamina potions are also a good idea. The minigame itself is pretty straightforward. You speak to the guardian mummy to begin, and from here, before entering every room, click the walls in front of you and disable the spear traps. You can sometimes fail this and take damage, but you have to disable them to continue on with the room. From here, you'll want to loot the golden chest in the middle. This chest gives you XP and has a chance at dropping a Pharaoh Scepter. It can also sometimes spawn aggressive scarabs after opening it. They can damage you and poison you, so be careful. After doing that, then try and pick the locks of the four tomb doors. Only one door will be the correct door that allows you to continue on to the next room. This minigame is best done in a group because everyone's doors will be the same, so if you see someone else go through a door, that's also the right one for you. However, the correct door does change every once in a while, so if it won't let you in right after someone else goes in, it's probably because it just changed. Now, Pyramid Plunder has eight rooms, each of which has its own thieving requirement. They're all more or less the same as that first room, just higher rooms offer more XP and a better chance at the Pharaoh Scepter. Assuming you're starting this method at level 91, you'll have access to all of them. Now, at the top of the screen while you're playing, you'll see there's a timer. You want to get to your final room right around when that timer hits about that halfway point. So, Again, assuming you're 91 thieving, from rooms 1 to 6, you just want to check for spike traps 
traps, loot the center chest, and continue on to the next room. At room 7, if you have some extra time, feel free to loot some of the room's urns, which can also have the chance to poison and damage you. But always save the chest in the middle for last, as it can spawn those scarabs. You can also loot the sarcophagus, as it also has a chance at dropping a pharaoh scepter, but there's also a chance a level 84 mummy will spawn. The sarcophagus also gives you strength XP for opening it, so if you're a skiller or some other strange account build, don't loot it. But if you are looting it, probably save this one for close to the end to avoid taking too much unnecessary damage or wasting too much prayer. Once your timer hits half, make sure you're in the final room or on your way. Loot everything you can in the room, again saving the golden chest for last. Once you finish, if you have a pharaoh scepter, teleport home to restore everything and use the scepter to return back to the minigame. If you're low on charges, the mummy can recharge your scepter, assuming you have enough artifacts. Now, let's say you're still in the pyramid when you run out of time. You'll just be kicked out to the entrance of the pyramid. So for my no scepter gang, if you've completed the contact quest, you can use the underground bank north of the pyramid. If you haven't done the quest or have no scepter, well, you're sort of screwed. I can't really help you with that point. Once you're geared up, healed up, and ready to go again, just keep doing that over and over until you reach 99. Moving on to alternative methods, the best alternative, and the one I personally use to get to 99 thieving, is Knights of Ardone. But that's because of the technique I talked about earlier when I was talking about the foot pedal. You unlock these knights at level 55. However, XP rates at that level are pretty low. Around 80 is when it starts to get really good. Don't forget, you should also complete the Ardone Medium Diaries to increase your pickpocketing success rate on these guys by 10%. Now, you want to thieve from a Knight of Ardone in this house. If you hop around worlds, there's probably already one trapped in here. If not, you'll need to lure the right one into it using a dragon spear. You need to find the knight that, when you attack him, he won't follow you past this square. Once you've found him, open the door and line him up the way I have him on screen. After this, use the dragon spear special attack on him three times to push him in, then close the door. He will eventually wander down south to these two tiles. As long as you never stand on the tiles he walks on for too long, he'll just walk back and forth between them pretty much forever. Meaning you can angle your camera, stand north of him, and steal from him forever. Level 82, you unlock another alternative method. Assuming you have completed the Sins of the Father quest, you can pickpocket Vyres. Doing so can net you up to 3 million GP per hour, and pretty decent XP too. However, to pickpocket them efficiently, you're going to want to have the full rogue set, dodgy necklaces, and runes to cast Shadow Veil. A Lava Battle Staff and Cosmic Runes are perfect for this. If you have a gem bag, you should also bring that as they drop gems pretty frequently. You'll also want your Draken's Medallion and Vyre Noble Clothes. When you're ready, equip your Noble Clothes and use your Draken's Medallion to teleport to Darkmire and run north towards the Hallowed Sepulchre. In the house to the east of the Sepulchre is Valesia Von Pitt. She's the Vyre we're going to thieve from as she's right next to the Hallowed Sepulchre's bank and there's no guards to try and attack us once we take off our Vyre outfit. You you can trap her inside her house on one tile, so you just have to spam click her, but after 5 minutes of being trapped, she'll walk through you over to her respawn point. But it's really easy to trap her again as there's multiple points in the house that allow you to do so. Another plus is that she has a wine spawn in her house too, so you get a little free food. If you're up for a bit of a challenge, this house to the southwest of the sepulcher is also great. You can trap another Vyr, Violetta, on the same tile she respawns on. So basically Basically, you get to click over and over again on the same spot forever until you need to bank. The catch is that you need a Virewatch Sentinel to trap her on the other side, which can be a little difficult. Now, Vyres also drop a ton of junk items, so your inventory might fill up quick. Unless you do what I do, where I just leave two inventory slots open, one for coin pouches and one for coins. Gems will go straight into your gem pouch, however, runes will just disappear, and you'll get a message in your chat box that you didn't have room for the 
loot. If you wanted, you could also bring a stack of death and blood runes, that way the runes do go straight to your inventory, but I personally don't because I just like having the extra food. Mystery meat, blood pints, and the important one, blood shards, will just drop straight to the ground, so don't worry about those. Keep in mind, absolutely wear your rogue's outfit here as you can get double blood shards. Now at level 94, you could also do a different alternative method, pickpocketing elves. You can pickpocket them earlier than level 94. 94, but it's pretty unbearable. But assuming you have the level, they're pretty good XP and great profit. If you've completed the Song of the Elves, have dodgy necklaces, Shadow Veil, and the Rogue Set, you can get up to 4 million GP per hour by pickpocketing them in Priftinus and, again, get some great XP. Now the elf we are going to thieve from is Arid Hell in this house. I probably pronounced that name wrong too. This is because you're able to trap her on her spawn point, meaning after 5 minutes, she's not going to randomly walk back to it because she's already on it. Other than that, this method is a lot like Vyres. Elves drop a decent bit of junk items, most of it will fall to the ground, but runes will just disappear if your inventory is full. So you could just bring a stack of the runes they drop like I did. Unfortunately, crystal shards will also disappear, so you might want to bring one along so they have somewhere to go if you receive them. Regardless though, the big ticket item, the enhanced crystal teleport seed, will drop to the ground, and again, wear your rogues outfit because you'll get double. As always, a huge shout out to the old school wiki as a lot of their data was used to create this guide. I will see you in the next one.